Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how we can interface with WebSockets inside of Flutter. We'll also take a look at the Stream Builder widget, and we'll look at asynchronous snapshots. To simulate our WebSocket, we're going to be using WebSocket.org. Here we have what's called a Echo WebSocket. And you can see the behavior of the echo test if we just connect to it like this. When we send a message to it, it automatically not only gets the message, but also sends the message back to us. So if I change the message here and then I click send, you can see it says sent, this is data, received, this is data. So the basic idea behind an echo test is just to test to see if the web circuit is working properly and you send the message through, and rather than having it go to another client, you just have it come back to your own client. The actual WebSocket address is right here inside of this location box, and we'll be using this inside of our application. I'll make sure to link this page in the description so you guys can take a look at it if you'd like. The Flutter SDK comes with quite a lot of third-party plugins. The one that we're going to be focusing on today is called WebSocket Channel. The WebSocket channel plugin provides us with what are called stream channels, which wrap around our WebSocket connections. Stream channels are basically just streams with a sync attached to them. The sync is the part which sends the data, and the stream is the part that receives the data. The WebSocket channel also is a very good cross-platform implementation of this type of API. And that's why it's included in the Flutter SDK. Also, the WebSocket channel's sync property is slightly different from a normal stream sync property in that it has a close method which we can use to close the actual sync. And we'll be using this in our application as well. All right, so let's start with this application. We need to make our imports. We need two libraries from the WebSocket channel package. The first one is the IO library, so IO.dart. And then the second one is just the main library, which is WebSocket channel.dart. I've got some boilerplate already in this application. We have our root widget, which creates a material application, and then it points towards a stateful widget, which has a state object, which creates a scaffold. Inside of our state object, we can create two global variables, one for our WebSocket channel, and the other one for a text editing controller so that we can gain access to an input box. The basic idea behind this program is that we'll have a input box and a button. We'll be able to type in strings into the input box. And when we click the button, the string will get sent to the WebSocket. And after it gets sent to the WebSocket, we will then receive the incoming information from the WebSocket and put it into the body of our application. Inside of our init state function, we can set up our channel and our controller. For the channel, we want to set it up by connecting it to iowebsocketchannel.connect and then passing in the address for our WebSocket into this connect method. The controller is just a text editing controller object and we just need to instantiate it. Below our init state function, we can create a send data function. And this will be the function that will be activated when we click the button in our application. So in here, we want to check to see that our controller text is not empty. And if it's not empty, then we want to grab our channel sync and we want to add to our sync the controller.text. And then afterwards, because we want to clear the text box, we just set our controller.text equal to an empty string. As mentioned before, the sync part of our WebSocket channel is the part that sends out the data, and then the stream part is the part that receives the data. So we're using the sync here sort of like we would use a list or any other kind of collection of data, and we're adding in our string, and then the string gets sent down into the WebSocket, and then because our WebSocket is a echo WebSocket, it bounces back into the stream side of our channel, which we can then use in various different ways. We also want to override dispose and call channel.sync.close so that we actually properly close the sync when this widget goes out of the scope. 
All right, so now let's build out our user interface a bit. We want to add an app bar to our scaffold, and then in the body, we'll create a container. Inside of our container, we'll have some padding, and then we'll have a column. And our column will have in it our input box and our stream builder widget. So first, let's start with the input box. Let's create a form. And the form will have a single text form field in it. We'll connect this to our controller by passing controller into the controller property. And then we'll give it a little bit of decoration so that the user knows what to do with this box. We'll just say in the label text, send to the WebSocket. After our form, we want to create our stream builder. This is a widget that can convert a stream into various widgets. So this is similar to the future builder and to our list view builder, except instead of taking in a list or a future, this takes in a stream. The stream that we want our stream builder widget to focus on in this application will be our channel.stream. And then like all of the other builder widgets, we need to create a builder function to define how this stream builder should create the widget that we want it to output. So this takes in the build context, and then it also takes in the asynchronous snapshot. Now an asynchronous snapshot is essentially just a bisection of our stream at a given moment in time. One of the easiest to understand examples of a stream inside of programming is a video. Videos are essentially just collections of data, and if you really think of them in an analog way, they're just collections of frames. At any given moment inside of your movie or your film, you can stop the film and you have one or two frames at most, and you can take those single frames and you can quite literally look at a single piece of the movie. That's essentially what our asynchronous snapshot is. If we pass in, say, 100 pieces of data into our stream, when we want to get a snapshot of that data, we can just call to our asynchronous snapshot and take a look to see what our data actually looks like. So inside of here, we just create a container, and then we'll create a text widget. We'll have a ternary operator that checks to see if our snapshot has any data in it. And if it has data, then we just want to present that data as a string. Otherwise, we want to present an empty string. So this is most of our application. Now we want to create our button, which we'll call the send data function, which we created up here. The easiest way to approach doing this is to just attach a floating action button to our scaffold. And our floating action button We'll have a child of icons, icon send, so it'll just be a paper airplane. And then the on pressed will be an anonymous function which calls to our send data function. Here's what our application currently looks like. We have our text box, it says send to WebSocket, and we also have our fab button, which has a paper airplane on it. We can type data into our text box, and when we push the button, it gets pushed into the body of our application. And if we type in more data and we click the button, it should replace the old data. So as mentioned before, this is just literally the asynchronous snapshot data at any given moment. And of course, we just want to get the latest snapshot. And so we just have that showing and we don't have the old data showing. If we wanted to make it so that we could see all of the information that has been passed into our WebSocket, we could do that as well. To accomplish this, let's create a new list of strings, and we'll set this equal to an empty list. And then in our init state function, we can call channel.stream, and then create a listener. And then the callback for this listener will take the data that comes out of our stream and then pass it into set state where we're taking our list and adding the data to it. Now down here where our stream builder is, we can comment out the stream builder. And instead of a stream builder, we can build a column. And in the column, 
we get our list and we call map on it. And then for each item inside of our list, we create a new text widget and we pass that into a list, which we then put into the children for our column. So now if we reload up our application and I type something in, it will now show up like before. But if I keep typing in something else, say test again, it will now show up below. So this will keep allowing us to add more information after we send it to our WebSocket. So we send information to our WebSocket, it echoes it back, and then it goes into our list, which then updates our widgets. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike the video, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good day.